Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 18 of the Chosen Ones Star Wars podcast here on Game Domain. As always, I'm your host, Jason, joined by my co-host, Captain. Biggity, 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 what's up? All right, so um, the last few weeks, we have been bringing you guys some of our personal Star Wars podcast where we discuss our top five, um, you know, in a certain thing. Uh, we are we gave you guys our top five uh, Star Wars characters so far, our top five lightsaber battles, and then our top five moments, which is what we just covered in uh, last week's episode. Um, so we thought we'd switch it up a little bit um, for today's episode. There's a lot of uh, rumors going around about future Star Wars games and kind of what, you know, now we know that the movie scene is kind of in flux right now. You know, we're supposed to get, a, you know, a new trilogy starting in 2022. Um, obviously, we have to wait for some new information to actually reveal what that trilogy will be. Um, obviously, we know what we're getting on the Disney Plus side of things. Like right now, I mean, we're looking for about like there's, I think, at least five series that are confirmed um that are going to be happening you know either this year or over the next few years so the only thing that's really up in air right now that we aren't sure of is kind of how the star wars gaming scene is um looking uh, now the thing with the star wars gaming scene is that in the past um before you know disney bought star wars and kind of gave ea this star wars license that they you know they have to give specific licenses to companies in order to, for them to make the games um you'd have a lot more star wars games coming out kind of like you know mini small games that weren't big releases like a battlefront game would be or then you'd have you know the lucas arts a big game like battlefront or like you know lego star the lego star wars um trilogy of games you know with the uh, original trilogy lego star wars the seek uh, the prequel trilogy lego star wars and then the lego star wars the complete saga and then you know the clone wars one in between that um and you just just back in the day you'd get a lot more different variations of star wars games but we haven't really been seeing that over the past few years since disney bought uh lucasfilm and uh, you know obtained the rights to star wars and so that's something that that's given disney a lot of heat um from the fan base as a whole because uh, people want more Star Wars games. We wanted to kind of go back to that old way where LucasArts would, you know, give other developing firms, developing companies, um, you know, licenses to work on a game. And then, you know, LucasArts would oversee it and just make sure, you know, they're following the correct formula and format of how a Star Wars game and something in the Star Wars universe should follow. And, you know, we just got a bunch of, you know, mini other small games and some great narrative games like Knights of the Old Republic. And um, I mean, even Battlefront 2 had that cool little, uh, not really campaign, but where you'd go through all the clone missions when you had, then they had Tamara Morrison voicing over everything for that move, for that, uh, for those cutscenes and whatnot when that came out in 2005 alongside the oh release God, of Revenge the, of the, the Sith. The 501st campaign, that is so good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely amazing. And so, you know, we've, we've been wanting stuff like that. Um, EA has really failed us in a way because the original Battlefront had no campaign. I, I think it was what, like, uh, you could count the amount of heroes that you could play as on your hand. Um, very few game modes, very few maps, and then they jam-packed everything into DLCs and forced you, you know, microtransactions and stuff like that. Give me some but, of those loot boxes. Yeah, to, just just to make us pay to play um, the EA's installment of Battlefront, which was a remake of, of you know, of the ba a remaster, if you will, of the Battlefront games that we all, you know, know and love so much that we all played during our childhood and still play today because, you know, they're still out there. You can buy them on Steam for like 10 bucks. Damn right. Uh, so a, yeah, great deal. And then, um, so, I mean, they gave us the first Battlefront. That was a very big letdown. They wanted to redeem it with Battlefront 2 2017. Um, and, you know, at first that was a letdown, but, you know, a lot of people just gave it crap for the microtransactions things, which everybody found out due to data mines and um, and reveal trailers and reveal gameplay sessions right before the game came out um, in, the, in the few months leading up to it. EA did fix the problem and removed all microtransactions heading into the game, and, and from the date that it, that it released um, in November of 2017 until now when the game's lifespan is basically over because you know dice the developing group that ea gave uh the battlefront the new <laughs> battlefront it. yeah remasters too they said no more um you know no more updates they just gave us a 2020 update a few months ago they said this is going to be the last one um even even though just to just to point out even though they've been like yeah we're not making anything else anymore they've been updating the game still yeah they still have yeah they've still been adding little stuff but no yeah, more like big bugging. more no more like big packs that they that they have been releasing in, in yeah the past, even the though there's like so much stuff that they could add to the game probably yeah, really sure. easily that would make it like a bajillion times better than yeah. it already is 
Um, and, and we'll see. Maybe they'll go back on that because as of now, there's no confirmed Battlefront 3. EA may be moving away from the Battlefront series um, due to the criticisms they've gotten from their remasters of it. We'll get into that a little bit later when we start speculating for some future Star Wars games. But basically, that's kind of the story of Star Wars gaming um, at, at the present time. And so there, everything, like we said, is really in flux. There's not much, many stuff that's confirmed. Obviously, we got Jedi Fallen Order this year, which kind of redeemed EA's, uh, you know, everybody wanted EA's license taken away, but they had Respawn Entertainment, you know, they partnered with them to, to, to make this game. And Jedi Fallen Order was just an amazing narrative experience that I think every Star Wars fan who played it just absolutely loved. There was really no bad reviews or, or, or harsh criticisms of the game. And people are calling for a sequel, and that sequel has seemed to be all but confirmed. And then we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, um, you know, that, that game was certainly probably some of the best Star Wars game that we have gotten since well, okay. the, let's, let's, since the original let's Battlefront go, let's, let's not go over the top here. Well, I mean, I, in my opinion, it might be. I mean, then of a narrative experience, I think, over the past decade and a half that we really haven't got anything since the original Battlefront 2, From I think that that is pretty good. From a narrative experience, I would rather play one of the uh, like one of the other games um like star trek uh, star trek online but what's wrong <laughs> with star wars online uh the old republic i would rather play that than because it was just kind of boring the the, the it was pointless it did nothing it took a game that was going to be really good which was 1313 which looked bloody interesting and it was like yeah. oh we've matched up what are we going to do uh let's quit let's let replace it with something what are we gonna... and then they just kind of like rushed to it it didn't yeah. I've seen it, played it, didn't really feel that great. And yeah. people can, you know, people can at me if they want and just be like, oh, you don't like me. <laughs> well, guess what? It wasn't that great. Um, we will, we'll save, we'll save our, uh, our discussion <laughs> for that for a little bit because we'll get into that uh, after we talk about our first topic. But so with that all being said about the kind of current scene of the Star Wars gaming world, uh, let's get right into the first really 100% confirmed with a release date with gameplay trailers um star wars game that we have coming for us and coming out this fall i believe it's in october is going to be lego star wars the skywalker saga i personally am an, I'm a massive fan of the lego star wars series um i just think it's it's amazing how they can you you still have the same narrative experience of going through the star wars saga and all the episodes and, and you know and you do it in this lego mission form but you still go through the main story and then obviously you know they add in their little you know their little typical lego humor um that just makes it you know light uh and and fun for people of all ages to play and I just always thought that the Lego Star Wars games were, were pretty underrated. Obviously, they're nothing in comparison to a Battlefront game or to a game like Jedi whoa, Fallen Order or Knights whoa, of the whoa. Old Republic. I mean, the Lego Star Wars games are like pure gold. Well, they are, but I'm just saying, in you know, in for like an overall like impactful like narrative experience and whatnot and stuff like that. The, the, obviously, it's a completely different genre of games that doesn't really you know they you not really equate doesn't really compare. It, they're still fantastic games, and I would say that. Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga might be probably my second favorite Star Wars game after the original Battlefront 2. Um, you know, maybe that'll be a top five that we'll save for later, so I shouldn't have really spoiled that. But, yeah. um, so, I mean, I'm very, very excited for this Le uh, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. The one thing I just want them to shy away from is because they did this kind of with the Force Awakens Lego um, game that they made. I, I don't think that they did not make one for The Last Jedi, thank God. But... They did it with The Force Awakens, and I just don't really like when they throw in the voice acting lines, even if it's from the regular, you know, the uh, actor, the character. They are doing that with it. They, they are doing that. that yeah, that's something that I'm I not did. very fond of. I, I like the the Lego thing, you know, the, where you just mouth open, jaw drops, no no speech. Oh, there's yeah, no like stuff back and forth between each other. Kind of humor, yeah. yeah, there's no, I, I don't really think there's a need to have, like, Liam Neeson's voice coming out of Qui-Gon Jinn no, in the Star I'm Wars Lego game. I'm, I know the because like I watched the the trailer and there's a bit where it shows mm -hmm. like the uh, the uh, Phantom Menace and the you know, Obi Wan yeah. swings at Darth Maul. He does chuckle, so they yeah, might yeah. Well, they used to just have the grunts and them. chuckles and stuff yeah. like that. Nothing serious. We might not have, full, but I don't. I actually don't mind the Lego Star Wars that had the fully voiced uh, people in it. It was it was funny, mm -hmm. like you know. It, because these spliced lines together, you could tell when they yeah, done you can it. tell like, when they spliced. Yeah, because they like but, you're not yeah, having funny. Daisy Ridley and John Boyega come in to do lines for oh, no, Star like, Wars. Movies, I did, so I did not play. Stuff. I did not play that that game, and mm -hmm. people know why I did not play that game because <laughs> those movies don't exist. I'm just. I'm wait. Which which Lego Star Wars game do, had the voice actors so far, other than the Force Awakens version? 
I'm was sure, was I'm it maybe the Clone sure. Wars one? Because I don't yeah, think I played the. Cl I don't remember it. playing the Clone Wars. I remember playing the other the other ones. And I know for I'm a fact that the sure. complete saga and the and the two Lego uh, Star Wars games before that did not have uh, li like you know live voice acting lines in the, in it. I, I believe. So. I'm pretty no. I'm pretty sure the the there was one of them. Um... It might have been the Clone Wars one because I think that did come out after the complete saga. Um, cause that came out obviously when they were making the Clone Wars, uh, show. And I, I don't think it actually came out as long ago as like, I'm thinking, cause I think it probably came out maybe in the early 2010s. I don't know. I don't necessarily know, um, exactly when, but they, they might've had the voice acting lines. Cause I think they've, you know, cause they used to make the old Lego and Indiana Jones games too. That never had voice acting, but I think now they're kind of moving into having the voice acting lines thrown in there in the Lego game. Cause I think they've been doing that with, you know, the last few, lego iterations they've been doing of different series and franchises because i know i think they did the lego harry potter video games too um and i think they kind of revamped and updated those ones recently and i think they did have uh the voice acting lines in there for that as well but um yeah, yeah so I far, i'm definitely looking as forward as know, to this game just, uh, oh, wait, wait, just, just so you know yeah, as far as you know as far as i know sorry um the 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 thingy one um the clone wars What's it called? No, the stupid one that I don't know. Yeah, that one had proper voice acting in it, like people doing the dialogue. Yeah. Uh, proper talking and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think it was the one just before that that had lines from the movie spliced in. Oh, okay. Right. So, yeah, so yeah, the Force Awakens got actual voice acting. So yeah. people would come in and do the lines and all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. That's, I'm sure they paid them a lot of money to come do voices for a Lego game. More than likely. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'm personally very excited for this. I've always loved the Lego Star Wars uh, franchise. I will certainly be getting this uh, this game right when it comes out on release day. So, uh, Captain, what do you what do you think about uh, the new Lego Star Wars game? If I had the money, I would get it on release day, but I don't. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I love Lego Star Wars. I've had Lego Star Wars since the original, and I'm pretty sure I've still got the... PS2 game around yeah, here. I think I have somewhere. I have the GameCube version, I believe. Yeah, I have the GameCube ah, version. You know, but no, it's like it was great. Like as soon as you as soon as I learned to do the you know the whole um swing, jump, swing, yeah. jump thing, it, the, the game was easy to beat, which was yeah. which was kind of fun. Um and all the little hidden Easter eggs it. and and stuff was, oh, yeah. was very interesting as well. It's it so hard to one hundred percent. Oh no, it's not. Don't be a woman. Well, I mean, it's it's pretty it's for a Lego game. It's pretty difficult, you know, especially for as a younger kid. I mean, I haven't. I think I went back and played it I, on the mobile <laughs> version, uh, like Probably maybe a, a year or two ago. But I didn't try to go for a hundred percenting it. But I do remember, you know, back on the back when I had Lego. Uh, Star Wars: The Complete Saga on the Wii back when it first came out. I do remember trying to one hundred percent that game, and I did not have very much luck at it. Um, All you need to do to like complete any level at a hundred percent. Uh, well, okay. Me and my friends came up with a game, and I can't. I think it was the third installment of the Lego Star Wars, which was multiplayer. The third installment, I think, would have been the Complete Saga because they did both. The Complete Saga, yeah. Did, yeah. That one's funny because you can turn on the cheat, droids explode, and then yeah. you can play. And then you can play as C three PO, and you can just walk up to any enemy and go oh, and then blow up, and it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> and we t we turned an entire game into this to see who could kill a boss faster. By both of us playing a C3PO and walking up towards the boss and then just blowing ourselves up. Uh, it was absolutely hilarious. Yeah. But for the new game, oh, man, it looks so smooth. Like yeah, it when does, I watched it does that, that trailer, very, now, very I don't know if the trailer is actual in game stuff. I didn't see a little bit of Yeah, I think some of it is cinematic stuff. Some of it's not. Um, but even yeah. still, those cinematics, mm -hmm. that's better than stuff that's in like games with proper face yeah, tracking that, and stuff. Yeah, it's absolutely is, beautiful. Yeah. It do, it does uh, look really beautiful, and I I think even the uh, the original Lego Star Wars games because it is a Lego game, so they still I mean the graphics still hold up today. Kind of some of the cutscenes look a little bit outdated, but the graphics of the actual game when you're just kind of you know when you're strolling around the cantina or when you're just you know rummaging through any level in the game, I, I think that that the graphics certainly hold up for that uh, hold up for the uh, the original Lego Star Wars games. And then you know, then I saw the trailer for this one, and it just completely blows my mind how how much it how more great. enhanced they are. 
which and it, it's I can't crazy. remember in the trailer did they do that stupid they fly now joke that, that <sighs> they tried to sell God, the, I, the, I hope not I, I think one on. I think the trail I, I only saw the trailer I think when it first came out I, I think we we're supposed to get more information but I think it might be being pushed back due not the game being pushed back but I think like the the information release it might be being pushed back due to obviously the, you know the whole current world situation yeah but um uh, I think their marketing ploy was kind of like that. I don't know if you remember that one trailer for the Rise of Skywalker that just had Duel of Fates in there for no reason because it wasn't in the movie. And You're everybody talking about the one where they did like the whole Battlefront thing where they remixed and it's like dun dun, and then it like cut out and shit. Well, yeah, but and then well, and then um, it it, it was that trailer for the Rise of Skywalker where it was it it was like the first showing of Rey and Kylo kind of duking it out on the on the uh, death star and in order to get everybody pumped up and yeah. get prequel fans who hate the sequels to go see the movie they're like here's duel of fates now you have to come see the movie and then a lot of people were like okay yeah i'll go see the movie and duel of fates was nowhere to be found they are literally selling this game the same exact way because the only thing i remember from the from that from the reveal, reveal trailer is exactly what you just talked about with the zoomed in shot of darth <laughs> maul in that fight with duel of fates playing in the background so basically what it's come down to for the um for 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 star wars for in their marketing campaign is just throw as much prequel love as we can into the marketing campaign for anything and that's how you get all the the prequel fans who hate the sequels to come back in and give disney some money because they know how popular the prequels are of the last couple years because the generation like us who grew up with the prequels when we were little kids who now who just love them always even though they weren't the greatest movies but will still always love them they we grew up with them and then now we're you know we're like the older generation who actually has a voice now in the Star Wars fandom community, and that's why you know like even the meme community the meme community is just massive and, and all of that other stuff, and that's why the prequels are so popular now. And Disney is finally at least smart enough to recognize that, and they know if we can just shove any prequel nostalgia into anything, that's going to get people to buy it. Because if I guarantee you, what they should have done in any other case would be it's a new lego star wars game we've already seen the lego star wars for the first two trilogies so what should we show them for to get them hooked on this new game well of course sequel trilogy stuff because they haven't seen lego sequel trilogy but no of course mm. they don't do that because they know that nobody would care if they show the sequel trilogy so let's just put a zoomed in shot of darth maul's face with duel of fates playing in the background that that's how i kind of took their their little marketing campaign for that but um yeah i literally just decided to watch the trailer again and um Yes, it's funny, but yeah, it looks like it's ba it, it, like with the with the prequel stuff, it looks like it's using you know good old fashioned Kathleen yeah, Kennedy maneuver of nostalgia right there, which of can course. bite me. Um, but yeah, so obviously, uh, me and Captain were both uh, excited for the Lego Star Wars game that we will be getting this fall. Um, and then all right, so now we're gonna move on to uh, Jedi Fallen Order Two is a is a game that most of the fan base wants obviously maybe not captain but most of the nope. fan base wants the the people who play jedi fallen order fell in love with it um I, I personally really liked the game i thought it was very well done i thought it was um a very good narrative star wars experience one that we have been certainly missing out since disney uh bought the company and and ea you know we asked for it for a campaign in battlefront 2 they gave us Iden Versio for like two hours of gameplay, which was just not not really worth it. I mean, we got to Whoa, play as Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. Gameplay. It was it was it was pretty. I mean, you know, it's, obviously it's an over generation. Takes more I, than four hours, even if you speed run it. Ah, uh, well, I mean, I'm just I'm I'm exaggerating. I'm exaggerating, obviously, but it was it was pretty quick for for a Star Wars campaign that they were hyping up. Yes, I okay, I, I yeah, think it's it pretty quick. quick. Um, so. You know, obviously the two hours is an exaggeration, but I do remember beating the campaign in legitimately the first weekend I got the game. Because when I got the game, I wanted to grind the campaign first because I figured that yeah. I, I thought that that was going to be a, a really, you know, a really good campaign. But um, I, it was a little like disappointing. Out, Wait, what were you saying? I would like to point out since about 2009, there has been no, there has been no game outside of something like, you know, Metal Gear that hit so games like that that have got really detailed, you know, story plots and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. There is no game that has come out since about 2019 that you can't complete in under like a day. Yeah, so, that, that is true. Yeah, that, 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 nothing, the the gaming there. scene is definitely shifting towards that it's kind of. It's lost a lot. Yeah, because yeah, it focuses more on multiplayer now. Yeah, 100%. Um, even like some of Nintendo's games, like Super Mario Odyssey, you can beat in 10 hours, and they hyped that game up for years as being you <laughs> know, like a brand new thing for the for the Super Mario series. And it, and it's, you know, you beat it in 10 hours. But um, 
So uh, Jedi um, Jedi Fallen Order was definitely something that the fans have been missing out on for a while. Uh, a lot of people, you know, it was well received by the fan base. People were crying for a Jedi Fallen Order um, too. Uh, and EA has a room, you know, it's rumored that they have tasked Respawn Entertainment, the developers and creators of the original Jedi Fallen Order, to create a sequel. Um, obviously, following Cal Kestis, the main character, and um, the, you know, pe- obviously, I- I'm very happy about this. I'd love to to play another Jedi Fallen Order game. Um, uh, maybe he'll have some sort of encounter with other Jedi's that you know that we know. I mean, obviously, it takes place in between episodes three and four. Um, maybe he might end up dying at the end of whenever, I mean, who knows if they'll make a Fallen Order 3 and turn it into a trilogy, but maybe he'll end up dying somehow at the end of this arc, um, because we don't really, you know, obviously he's not around for the original trilogy. I doubt yeah, that he'll, he'll be in, like, the beginning. Yeah. Uh, uh, get him out of the way, I, because I, the actor is terrible, but I, you know. <laughs> I, I doubt that he'll ever appear in, in live action or a TV show. I mean, I, I don't really yeah, know, no, so no. I think it's safe to just kill him off. It, it, you know, this will be his story, was these, these couple games, or, you know, these two games, or three, however they want to shape it up. But, um, I think it would be cool to kind of throw in, which this is kind of ironic because i said i'm not really for this in the mandalorian kind of throwing in other canon characters in there for the hell of it but i i think that's what they should do with jedi fallen order i think maybe kind of get ahsoka or maybe even get kanan and ezra or you know the the Whoa. ghost crew from rebels we had um we had saw guerrero in this one didn't we well, yeah saw so, yeah saw guerrero was in this um i think i believe he was on kashik as part of the uh the wookie yeah. stuff so or he could even have Con, or he, you know, Jedi in the Jedi Fallen Order too. Uh, I think they could throw some canon uh, cameos in there. You could certainly see Ahsoka, uh, certainly see Kanan, Ezra, uh, Sabine, Hera. Um, you know, the Re- the Rebels uh, crew, and then you could, and then you could also see, I think. Sort, uh, sort of the uh, like the Rogue One crew, so maybe we could see a little bit of Cassian and Andor. Obviously, we're supposed to get the series of him next year. So if they give us Jedi Fallen Order early next year, they could say, "Oh yeah, here's Cassian and Andor in a cameo. He could just show up in a mission or something." And you know, maybe Cal, you know, starts to do something for the rebellion and whatnot for the cause against the Empire. And you know, maybe and Cassian has has an impact on that and has an impact on Cal. And that would be good because you know a lot of people aren't really excited for the Cassian Andor series. And if you get a whole fan base who loves this game um you know like h- hundreds of thousands of star wars fans who who love this game and are waiting for jedi fallen order 2 you throw him in a mission and just get people reminded about kind of that rogue one cast and like oh yeah this guy's supposed to get a tv show um and you know if you throw cassian in there you could also have Jin in there um and it, like you said they had saw Gerrera in the first one so those characters are obviously up for the taking to be in this one um I- i'm definitely looking forward to it uh, obviously, Captain, you are not looking forward to it. But so, why don't you maybe just take a few minutes to just explain to everybody what you didn't really like, why you didn't really fall in love with Jedi Fallen oh Order? Oh God, where do we begin? And- <laughs> <laughs> I will, right, I will tell you one thing I did like about the game. Uh, well, one one big thing that I liked about the game was the actual lightsaber building and customization. That yes, was, that that was that very was very awesome. cool. That was certainly one of my favorite things. That, I've always wanted what... a yellow lightsaber because yellow is my favorite color. Well, and that's, that was that's that was. What, uh, a Star Wars game where you're a Jedi, that is what it should be a massive thing. You know, they yeah. did it in um in the Xbox games and the on the original Xbox, which name I keep forgetting. Um the you know, the way you played in the old Republic. Well it was it was the old Republic. Oh my god, my brain. <laughs> I can't even think of I, I don't know what you I don't know. You know, back on the original much. Xbox where you it, it had Raven and it had Malik and all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, um yeah, the original well, ones. I, 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 I want to call them the Old Republic, but yeah, it's, it is. It's the Old Republic 1 and 2. But not Knight. No. Knights of the Old Republic. There we go. Oh, yeah, Knights of the Old Republic. That's what I was yeah, thinking, Knights but I thought Republic. that you would have thought yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, that one had lightsaber customization as well, which yeah. made it absolutely awesome. Um, but yeah, I did like that. I will say I did get a little bit of um, Starkiller kind of vibes, like the gameplay from from that like the, the just the way that it, it you kind of moved and when you got into a, battles the camera kind of stuck behind you guy and didn't really get in close or anything like that when yeah you did some of the cutscenes could definitely i also felt like i think ea wasn't banking on this game being as successful as it was so i think the graphics were kind of lackluster in some cases yes because to, they to the fact didn't a lot they, of modders improved them yes and they didn't i don't think that ea and there was a lot of glitches i i don't think that oh, ea God. wanted like thought that it would be this good so i don't think they gave respawn the right 
um, amount of you know of the amount of money or funding or whatever you want to call it in order for them to get to get the graphics done because I think that, that might they be the did, reason. yeah I, I that that that's what I think because respawn you know they created Titanfall the Titanfall games were really really oh, good Titanfall. and then um I, I just I, which what did surprise me because I'm like Titanfall two which came out a few years before Jedi Fallen Order looks the same if not a little bit better than the graphics of Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Fallen Order has has very very good world building and, and story building and I just love all like the shots of when you're just kind of hopping around on Kashyyyk or hopping around on um. Well, on Dathomir, and you just see the, you just get like, you know, you just stand still and kind of pan around, and you get this beautiful shot yeah. of of the scenery around you. And I thought that that was really, really good for a narrative Star Wars video game, but I just thought it was lacking in that it looked very grainy and pixelated for a game that came out in well, 2019 on a on a you know on a new generation console. Yeah. So now that um now that you mentioned that they might not be given enough money. It explains why that Sarah Junda, whatever in it, however you pronounce it, is my paralysis nightmare. <laughs> I mean, I swear, like, I don't know how they fucked up the mocap on that yeah. or anything, um, because, you know, you've got a camera pointed at that woman's face, but she looks like some sort of demon. Like, yeah. it's, it's, Are you talking I about the, you're talking about the Dathomir, the, the night sister girl? No, I'm talking about the, the Jedi woman who, in the ship with you, cut herself off from the Force. I'm pretty sure she's oh, called, like, Sarah. Yes, yeah, Sarah, 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 whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. like, that, the face creeps me the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she I don't definitely, know what they did with her eyes. I, like, I've, I've looked at the actual actress in real Yeah, it doesn't, she doesn't look, look like that. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely creepy, like, yeah. the I like if I was I was scared. I mean, and I don't get scared that easy. But Jesus Christ, I'm looking at it right now. Kill me, kill me now. And also, how can they still be selling it for forty odd quid? What is wrong with these people? Um, but it was really the story. It had like the story had nothing for me. It was literally just you know fetch quest after fetch quest after all this kind of stuff. Go from place to place. It's like, okay, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um. It didn't really tie. Like I couldn't find a way that it tied in. The only way I, I, I could technically connect it with the actual other Star Wars, you was, know, movies. I, I think the whole stuff. holocron quest that obviously it's centered yes, around. I think that's kind of the main linking thing because um, we've we've known about that story for a while. Uh, we, we saw that arc um, in the Clone yeah, Wars where Cad Bane you know, tries to go in and get that holocron. So yeah, that was funny. We also had uh, Darth Vader in it. Yeah. But- it was like super vanilla Darth Vader because yeah. he gets defeated by a creepy nightmare monster woman. Yeah, and also um, the the voice actor was not. I, when when yeah. they choose, I'd much rather them literally just take James Earl Jones lines from from the movie and, and just throw them in there and use them he's because even, I I, I don't really back. think anybody captures that captures that voice. At, at no, all. I mean I just think did, you can did, use did. old lines and and figure something out to just put over have Vader say only a few lines and whatnot. Um, yeah. Also, the main actor, um, the the ginger dude whose name I cannot remember. The actual. He played, well, the, the, he the played actual Cal, actor. but the actor actor, I don't. Yes. Know. Um, who played who played I'll the Joker right in Gotham? I want to say Gotham, even though I watched all the Gotham, I can't remember. Cameron um, Monaghan. I don't. I've yeah, never he heard of him. Yeah, he's terrible. He is a terrible actor. Uh, he, I'm pretty sure the only reason no, I'm, I'm not like you know who's fucking terrible. I never watch anything. I've seen him in stuff, but he's he is a terrible actor. Oh, he, so, he actually looks a lot like Cal, the character. Um, is... it was just it was. I don't get it. I'm pretty sure he. The only reason he got, <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice. I'm pretty sure the only reason he got that, um, part that role that yeah. part was because he was in the Gotham series as as a Joker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he'll never be my Joker or any Joker because he's a fake. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I don't, I didn't, I couldn't connect. When I play a game that's story driven, I want to connect to at least yeah. one person. And the only person I did connect to was the weird pilot thing. That I don't oh know yeah, I love that. Is. I I had he the same so I had the same relationship with that pilot thing as I did with, and I'm so mad that I can't remember the guy's name. Um, the, the same, same, same type of character with like the four arms from Solo, you know, I'm talking about the pilot guy who dies yeah, in the early the on, little monkey guy yeah, the little shot. monkey guy who, um, yeah. you know, he, he's like, he's like, you ever been to a Minoc run? Like that guy, that, that, that's, I had the same yeah. relationship. So I really, really like that pilot guy in the, in Fallen Order because he reminded me of the guy from Solo. If you, yeah. if you just stand around the ship, 
he'll do stupid stuff and just talk funny lines and stuff. He's like he's like a little Danny DeVito kind of yeah. guy. And yeah. that was the only person in the entire story of that that I could connect to, yeah. apart from the clones that gunned down the dude's master. That was yeah, that that, right that was that was also a very. I thought that was and a it, very very it, good scene. It went right. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to be like it was the worst Star Wars game because you know the, anything that involves uh, episodes seven, eight, and nine is going to be the worst because those movies suck, and that entire series of Star Wars going to die in a hole. Um, but it's terrible. It's a shit game. It it was built. It was hyped. It was hyped up on a pres on the on the presence of you know Star Wars thirteen thirteen, which they then changed and were like yeah you're gonna be doing this instead, and they just fucking everything was kind of last minute and they were like we we got to swap all this stuff out and they delayed everything and the there's no story there's absolutely nothing to it and people can fight me I will fight I will get a two sticks with a lightsaber fight and I will fight you, um, but it is it is one of the worst Star Wars games that is it's just boring it's absolutely boring. All right, certainly uh, some very passionate opinions on there. Um, well said, even though I don't agree with you. Well said, I understand your uh, I understand your frustrations. Um, all right, so the next game we're going to be getting into is um, it's under the working title Project Maverick. It wasn't like nobody really heard about it only until a few weeks ago. Um, it was already supposed to be revealed. Uh, we're recording this on Friday, June twelfth. And apparently now it was supposed to be revealed on June second with a reveal trailer. Then that got pushed back to June eighth. Then that got put back to June fifteenth. So right as of right now when we are recording this, the trailer is supposed to come out June fifteenth. So when you guys are watching this, the trailer should already be out. Um, obviously, if they delay it again, the trailer won't be out and you won't be able to watch it. <laughs> but um, there was a leak an hour ago. Yeah, there was a leak. Yeah, I'm looking because I'm looking at the leak article right now. There, there was a leak of the actual title of the game. Uh, the leak is is credible because it's on Microsoft's Xbox website of like pre-ordering the game, and it has the the name and the logo. Um, oh, it, it's cool. called Star Wars Squadrons. Uh, the working title was Project Maverick. That's what it was rumored. Uh, what you we know, should that was do right now, to. by the way, just, and everybody at home can see this. We should put up the. Uh... And just in case it doesn't, I'm gonna steal that artwork real quick. Oh yeah, the, uh, are you the looking screen. at the artwork that I'm looking at with the uh, with the stormtrooper and then the rebel with, pilot? Yes. Yeah. Oh my that, God, that, that that's really beautiful. that's really good uh, artwork. Um. So I mean. Oh, it's by the way, it's an official thing. It's on the official EA Star Wars. Oh, it is. It is now official that they. Yeah, I guess since it, the, I guess since it leaked. Ago, okay, EA since Star it Wars. leaked, I guess they just. Pilots said, wanted it. tune in for the reveal trailer of Star Wars Squadrons this Monday, June fifteenth. Got it. So in two days. Yeah. Uh, 8 a.m yeah so well time. when yeah and when, and when this episode will be coming out um yes. so all right so basically what it's supposed to be um it's being worked on by ea vancouver we were aware of for i think like about a few months maybe dating back to kind of middle of last year that uh ea vancouver was working on a star wars project for a game we had no clue what it was then the rumors came out that it was some sort of flight simulation game um, and obviously that, that, I guess that's kind of what it is. Who knows if there's going to be a narrative experience or if it's going to, I'm sure it'll have narrative and online. Um, obviously like judging by this, um, judging by this, this, the artwork, it seems like maybe, you know, that could be a protagonist antagonist, uh, of the, of a narrative story, which would, which would be pretty cool. Um, so, I mean, I'm assuming just off of what we've seen and what we've heard that it's going to just be a flight based space battle simulator, kind of just all hell breaks loose, just fighting in space like Star Wars is made for, um, I, I just pure flight simulator battles, probably no real on ground stuff. It's, you know, there's not going to be lightsabers or whatnot in this game. So it'll be a nice little, um, breakaway from, kind of you know the the typical star wars games that we're used to well it's either where it's either like big ground battles with space battles like we saw on the multiplayer of battlefront 2 and then like single player campaigns with lightsabers and jedi which is what we saw in jedi fallen order so this will be kind of a unique thing um you know well, like i said we're you know we're recording this on friday so the reveal trailer could tell us that we're getting a story and an online and we wouldn't know that by now so i'm just predicting i assume that we're going to be getting a um uh you know we're going to be getting an online and a narrative story uh which would be pretty cool so yeah i mean this game looks pretty good um obviously we'll see the reveal trailer and see the graphics i'm sh ho hopefully the hopefully the graphics i you know it's it, for a space battle game it should look pretty good i mean the graphics for the space battles in battlefront 2 for you know starfighter assault and, st and those game modes th those graphics were pretty good i'm sure these will be just as good if not better obviously being a few years later of a release uh, almost four years by the time this game comes out next year 
Um, so, you know, hopefully it'll be, uh, it'll be a step in the right direction for, you know, other types of Star Wars games that don't really just follow either a, a regular multiplayer experience, but just all out space battles and a, um, a, a narrative experience following the, you know, the story of a Jedi. So, you know, we get something different here with, a different type of game and uh you know i hope ea like we were talking about at the beginning of the show that ea hasn't really been doing what lucas arts and, and and lucasfilm used to do in the past with kind of just giving you know letting people make their own games left and right releasing a few small star wars games a year and then a big one sprinkled in every every few years or so um so we haven't really been getting games like this that maybe we should have gotten already but you know here it is um we're going to be getting it next year it looks like um and yeah so you know when we see the reveal trailer we'll probably talk about it on next week's uh, episode but obviously you know we're recording this a few days earlier so we 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 have not seen any sort of trailer right now so we'll have to save our thoughts on that for next week um, can we not so, do some speculation come on yeah you can do some spec yeah i mean i was just going to ask you what your thoughts on it and you can do some speculation of uh whatever you want so what are your thoughts on uh on you know th this new project and and this new game that's going to be coming out judging by the artwork um i hope to god that yes it does have a story aspect of, of you know you know you can be the light side dog side that's pretty cool mm -hmm. um what i really want to what i really want to see is if you are you still looking at the artwork by the way um yeah i'm looking at i'm looking at an article i'm uh, sifting through it I, i'm looking at the art uh, the artwork right now on the top of the article if you look mid mid bottom, you can see, and you can see it with the Star Destroyer. But if you look mid bottom, um, you can see that there is a rebel. I don't want to say capital ship because it's not as it's it's basically the ship that Admiral Radish, <laughs> Radish. Uh, flew. <laughs> yeah, it's the one that Admiral Raditz flew in in Rogue One. Mm -hmm. well, I I'm hope to, to get God. A blown up image if I can look. More yeah, I hope to God we, go. we are allowed to like have capital uh, ships, fighting capital ships. That would along be... with or or we could no. Well, you don't need to do that because all you have to do is just go in a light speed at another ship, and you could just cut, oh yeah, no, cut no, it in no, half. Fine. So, but who knows? Maybe do you remember one. the original Battlefront Two had the ability to man the capital ship yes. gun turrets? Yes, that yes. how. That would be how cool. how awesome would it be if Star Wars Squadrons had that aspect to it? Well, or, or maybe like a crew yeah. could pilot the big ships. I think because you know people would be ramming those things. Yeah, into that would be other. that would be really cool if you have a multiplayer experience where it's kind of like it could be an all out free for all where it's like all right, you have there's 20 players in the game, five players manning four ships and everybody's on a team that would be a really cool game mode they could probably do and also and you know then they would each you know you'd have like two people on the turrets um you you could have two people go out like on regular like sh you know, like on small ships or whatever on small rebel yeah, fighters or whatnot yeah on a fighter and then yeah and then or and then there's there could be another person who's flying the the big ship itself um that that would be pretty cool um also, they could probably pull that into the a narrative aspect because that could be kind of the main campaign thing. Would just you would just be any mm. old rebel fighter or whatnot, um, fighting against the Empire, and it just kind of shows and goes through your uh, specific journey as just being kind of a regular pilot, which I think is kind of cool because you know we see this re the rebellion in the Empire as these massive entities with thousands and thousands of pilots who we don't really know anything which about other than true. the occasional shot. What do you mean? The, the Empire has thousands and thousands of pilots. The fucking rebels don't. Oh well, no, yeah, don't. yeah, you know what I mean. But um, but, but with bi with big armies and there's there's loads of fighters that we don't, you know, we don't know who they are. We don't know their story. And I just think, you know, seeing this game, the narrative experience could be seeing kind of the rebellion yes. and the, and on the other side of the Empire from the the eyes of just a regular fighter who's just well, going out there in the field would be uh, would be the, pretty um, interesting. On the poster, that's not Luke. That's it. Looks kind of like Luke, but that's yeah, a woman. no, yeah, no. I yeah, I I, I think so I thought it looked like a woman from character. the beginning. Yeah, like like. Oh, I, just, I, I didn't I'm even gonna, notice that. I, I didn't even yeah. think about that being Luke until you just said that. Actually, which is kind of funny. It, but well, now I it does. I saw something realize that it showed Luke like as it. a as a X wing pilot. But I've just had a stupid thought, and this would be cool. It's obviously from this poster we can see that it's set during you know yeah. you know battle around the Yavin era the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. How awesome would it be 
if that TIE fighter pilot was Iden Versio. Oh. Uh, yeah, that, that, and that rebel cool. pilot was also Iden Versio in the future when she becomes part of the resistance. That would be cool. It's not gonna happen. It might happen. Yeah, but at the same time I thought yeah, how awesome would thing. it be if the rebel if there was two campaigns, Rebel Empire and hopefully yeah. there is a thing that says here that says there's gonna be prequel stuff, right? I hope. Ooh. Because I want my I want access to my Arc One Seventy Fighter. <laughs> That's a beautiful ship. Um, but it would be cool to see a Red Baron style kind of confrontation between like the top notch uh, Tie Fighter Tie Fighter pilot as like the Red Baron, and then the X Wing pilot as the people who tried to shoot down the Red Baron. That would be cool. Well, I'm just you know I'm trying to hype this thing up as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna screw it. Like yeah. That would be done. interesting, but I I don't. To be honest with you, I think that's very interesting, but I don't think they'd go down that route because I think they no. probably want to give this like kind of a brand new experience and kind of maybe not it's, go it's back to that. It's pretty much just going to be, you know, uh, like Rebel game. Strike, Rogue Squadron stuff. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's, with it's, new it's graphics and whatnot. That, that, with really new know. graphics and the updated ships because I can see... Sadly, I don't see any B-wings, which is pissing me off, but I do see A-wings, yeah, X-wings, yeah, Y-wings, on that one, and the y wing the U wings hiding just oh, under see. the X wing in the middle. Yes, yes, I do see that. It's two of them. Um, um, damn, no B wings. I did love a B wing. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, I think that covers it, kind of, for uh, Star oh, yeah. Wars Squadrons. Um, next week we'll bring you guys some more discussion on what was actually in the reveal trailer itself, because, like we said a couple times, we have not seen it yet. Um, and then, all right, so the last thing we're just going to kind of quickly touch on before we wrap up here is um, just kind of the prospect, the idea of maybe an EA Battlefront 3. Uh, Battlefront 3 is, you know, obviously we were supposed to get Battlefront 3, Battlefront 3, excuse me, from um, LucasArts, I think back in like 2007 or 2008. I think they had most of the game done. They had a logo. They had things ready to be released. Um, they kind of just dropped it. Disney dropped the prospect of bringing it back when they bought um, Lucasfilm from George Lucas. And then, obviously, they went their route of giving EA this license and kind of rebuilding the Battlefront franchise in their own Which eyes. <laughs> and so now they they are up to making a Battlefront 3. I mean, they're already off their little flight path and whatnot because they took the, the updates. I almost said DLCs, but they're not DLCs. The yeah, free no. updates from Battlefront 2 over the past three years up into the beginning of this year with you just got the you know what they said is really the last big uh data you know data pack with, update yeah, adding and scarif. so That's yeah it. adding scarif um so right now it looks like battlefront 2's lifespan is really over they they have not said anything about no. battlefront 3 um but when, when battlefront the first battle when battlefront 2015 came out they said, like, in 2016, oh, yeah, we're already making a second Battlefront. So they kind of had it right away that they were going to maybe release a new Battlefront game each year of the of the Star Wars movie. Um, and then with the with the more backlash that came from Battlefront 2, they definitely wanted to redeem themselves, and they tasked DICE with, with making the periodic uh, free updates and not having people pay for DLCs like they did in the original Battle... The, not, the, not the original Battlefront, in the original Battlefront 2015. Um, you know, EA's version. And so that kind of took us, you know, through the last two full years and now into the third year of its lifespan. And we are, you know, now at the time of, of you know, looking on the prospect of the idea of a Battlefront 3. EA has said nothing about it. And they apparently it looks like they're taking dice and putting them onto other projects, kind of moving away from the Battlefront series. So it looks like they're abandoning it as of right now. Obviously, there's no confirmation. Maybe they're having a separate, they'll have a separate team work on developing a Battlefront 3. And I mean, I'd love and be open to a Battlefront 3. I'd hope it would redeem the flaws of the first two. I still do think, and I believe this firmly, I absolutely love Battlefront 2 2017. I think it's a fantastic game, and I think it's very underrated because so many people were just shied away right at the beginning by microtransactions. Most of those people didn't even give that game, a, didn't even give the game a chance, canceled their pre-orders, didn't even buy it, and just talk crap about it till this day, even though they still have never picked it up and actually played it and if they did they'd realize that it is really an incredibly fantastic game and all the content they re released since the the game launched back in november of 2017 has just made it better and better and better and has not cost one cent out of anybody's pocket the only thing that they're making people pay for is extra skins which is just aesthetics and you see that in basically every game on the face of the planet right now because most games that aren't like nintendo games will have you pay for little small dlc packages that just make you be able to 
customize the look of your character and whatnot. So that is, you know, typical of, of a game, you know, in this current generation of gaming. So that's really not nothing, you know, nothing surprising. And, you know, but people are still still criticize Battlefront 2 to this day without ever picking it up and just, you know, talk about the microtransactions and talk about its flaws and its issues and the controversy surrounding it right when the game came out, which is really just unwarranted and unjust, especially because, you know, the game has evolved so much since it, you know, since it originally came out. So obviously that's my two cents on that topic. I, I really want a Battlefront 3 because I think that it should build off of Battlefront 2 and the content they made there and just expand the unit, the Battlefront universe even bigger into greater lengths um and obviously the graph they'll, they'll it'll be made for the next gen consoles the ps5 and the xbox series x coming out this fall or this holiday season whatever um and so you know the graphics and the power of these games will look a lot better than battlefront and battlefront 2 did and so i think i i'm completely welcome and open to the idea and i really hope that ea doesn't abandon this series yet and if they want to abandon it then i i hope they just give the license to somebody else or something or, or disney has somebody else make a battlefront 3 because i just think the battlefront series is such a great prospect of an idea because the, you know the four battlefront games that we've gotten obviously the first two being much better than the than the um the original two in 2003 and 2005 being much better than the ones we got in 2015 and 2017 but they still all share that common theme of yeah it's just a big multiplayer star wars experience where you can literally just go and play with a bunch of people online or a bunch of friends in a LAN party and just play as star wars characters and and duke it out and, and play different game modes and, and and play with each other which is just an amazing thing i mean it's like call of duty with with star wars characters and star wars guns and whatnot and it's just a it's just an amazing you know idea for a, for a franchise and for a gaming series and i just really hope that it doesn't die right now and i really hope that they that they continue to uh, evolve the the franchise into something bigger um and, and you know maybe one day it could compete with the likes of call of duty or or some of those other first person you know team deathmatch type shooters um that that's just my take on it uh and so you know captain uh, before we wrap up here if you want to say anything about you know what you think of of kind of how EA's handled Battlefront, and if you, you know, if you're looking forward to Battlefront Three, and if you think that EA will eventually make one. Well, just so y'all know, if on Steam you have Battlefront Two, you can get Battlefront Three. Um, it's the it's called the Battlefront Three Legacy Pack. Um, or oh, just you're talking about... Legacy. Oh, yeah. yeah it's a mod created by a dude which brings in the stuff that was I going to be used this, yeah. in the original Battlefront 3. Which, um, that's like the, like I think we were talking about before the show, that's like the start, that's like the um the space to ground battle. Space kind of to ground, scene. hell yeah. yeah. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. I would suggest getting it. It's it's not that massive. It's not that, you know, thing. It's, it's still in demo right now, but... People love it. It's absolutely awesome. It has multiplayer. Go check it out. Um, and I but, believe Battlefront uh, 2 on Steam is only like 10 bucks. I think, the original one. It's probably less than that. The, yes, yeah. by the way, it's the original, not the new Battlefront. It's yeah. the original Battlefront 2. The the good, the good, really good one. <laughs> uh, but with EA's Star Wars... Um, uh, uh, it is. So, like, back when the, first, when, when the remake, the first remake came out, it's absolutely terrible. I like the story, but they did they they suck. Okay, EA suck. Um, yeah. EA will always suck. They, they, they I don't know what happened to them. They used to be a good game company, now they're just terrible. Uh, but that one was kind of like meh. I've got it, but it was too but it was too much reliant on you know setting custom loadouts and all this kind of bull. It was pointless. And then what they did with you know the Battlefront Two remake, I actually kind of like. I love it. Supremacy is my favorite game mode next to Ewok Hunt. I have a lot of fun playing it, and the only big issues I ever had with that game is the fact that they never balance heroes, they never balance game modes, they never do all this stuff until people get really angry at them and stop playing the game. And EA have fucked up because what they should be doing is they should be focusing on it now with the fact that there is a massive boom in people playing the game. But they're like, nah, we don't see in a bit. Yeah, I know. Uh, so it was absolutely... Po I mean, come on, what's the point? EA have just lost out on so much like possible revenue from that and future revenue from... Uh, from adding in stuff well yeah, it's like by the way the, the, the battlefront one remake it was meh it, it was i've more focused on the story than the multiplayer because the multiplayer was broken and then when it came to battlefront 2 uh remake i really liked it the, the campaign was good i like how it tied the the movies together and the story uh even though i don't like the last movies 
and you know the multiplayer is still a lot of fun to play like give me some clone wars action anytime i'll be all uh, over that running yeah, around it's it's my favorite one but yeah nice ea, EA have fucked up that's all i can say ea mm. ea just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and there is nothing really to redeem them yes they come out every once in a while with something good but the majority of the stuff that they do is terrible so i will bash ea till the day i die or the day <laughs> they turn their company around uh but yeah it was it, they're all right yeah um so yeah all right so there are those are our takes on um on kind of the the current and the future um world of star wars gaming um obviously we we you know we hope and pray that that they will make more star wars games in the future even little small releases like this star wars squadrons looks like to be um obviously it could be a big game we're not going to judge it yet without seeing this reveal trailer but you know just little small games like we used to get like back in the day with uh uh, you know all, all those little kind of arcade mini games and whatnot that they used to that they used to release back on older consoles. Um, I, I just think if we start to get some of those now, where they can just kind of release maybe even like one smaller little game um, a year and whatnot, and then every few years you get a big game like a Jedi Fallen Order sequel or like a Battlefront three or like a big Lego Star Wars game like we're getting. Um, and I mean yeah, so hopefully going into the future we'll be getting more Star Wars games because. Who doesn't love more Star Wars games? They're certainly giving us enough TV shows. They're certainly giving us enough movies. So why not continue to give us some more Star Wars games like we were used to in the past? Um, And, uh, yeah, so uh, that does it. And, uh, yeah, so we hope you guys enjoy the reveal trailer, which, you know, maybe you've already seen. Or maybe, you know, watching this will will make you aware that the reveal trailer should have been out on the day you're watching this on Monday, June 15th. And, um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you.